Hello, 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 hello. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. I, 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 I back. Hello. Why does it tell me that nobody is here? Looks like I got one person in the audience. I feel like I might have more people in the audience. Hi, Ronald. Hi, Jerry. Somebody's username is relaxing. That's nice. Hi, Thomas. Welcome back. Welcome back. I see you guys in the chats. When did I freeze? In my last video, it froze. What was the last thing I was telling you about? Probably I was talking about yoga. I was telling you the type of yoga that I practice. And I was just dropping that information in there because sometimes people ask me. So there's the answer uh, mentioned in the previous video. But this morning I was practicing Baptiste Power Vinyasa Yoga. So that is my more vigorous practice that gives me the muscles. Um, After my yoga practice this morning, then I did my meditation. And at the moment I'm training in um, somatic meditation in the body, um, Buddhist, somatic Buddhist meditation from Tibet. So I'm learning about Tibetan Buddhism, but specifically it's tantric. So how many words can we string together here to tell you what I'm doing? Somatic, tantric, Tibetan Buddhism. <laughs> um, I'm studying with Reggie Ray. His organization is called Dharma Ocean, based in Colorado. And I've been meditating with him for almost two years. And I'm currently in a program, uh, a 10-week program right now, learning how to do that. Uh, specific type of meditation. It's like level one out of four courses. If I do all four courses, I'll be certified to teach this kind of meditation. But for right now, I'm just a student. La, 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 la. Is the internet still working? Do you see the concern on my face? I really want to spend quality time with you, but the internet's pooping. How am I supposed to lead a global revolution of joy when the internet dies every five minutes? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, well, we'll hang on to this internet as long as I can. Don't worry. If you really like hanging out with me and you enjoy my live streams, I will not always be in this room dealing with this internet in this blessed jungle in the tropics. I love to travel around. I'm here until the end of May, probably. So we have a couple months of shit internet to deal with. But after that, I think I'll go find somewhere new. This won't last forever. Uh, relaxing likes my bikini top. Thank you. I actually bought this on Amazon when I was in America. If you search for string bikini, you'll find some on Amazon. <laughs> I really like this color, hot pink. Mm. 
Uh, Ronald asked, has the meditation helped? Has the meditation helped with what? Could you specify what you're wondering for me? I've been learning a lot, um, having a lot of fun learning, excuse me. And I'm very happy to share what I'm learning um, with you guys. It's just such a big topic that uh, if you can ask me specific questions, that will really direct what I share so that I don't just ramble off into randomness. Um, so yeah, feel free to ask me any questions about Bali, about yoga, about meditation. What did I do? After my meditation, I made a smoothie. I really love my morning smoothie. Uh, this morning I put raspberries, blueberries, and dragon fruit. Dragon fruit is my favorite fruit officially, just so we all know. Um, if you live in America, chances are the dragon fruit is imported and shriveled and tiny and like this big and looks sad and really shouldn't be there. Uh, but the dragon fruit here in Bali is like this big and it's fresh and luscious and juicy and drippy and like, it's like hot pink like this. Um, yeah. So then I put this fresh fruit in my smoothie and I blend it up with coconut water and I add in for those of you who really like to know about nutrition and the stuff that I drink and eat, which I do know, you know, that you want that sometimes I put in flax seed, chia seed, pumpkin seed, maca powder, protein powder, chocolate flavored, and mushrooms powder, cinnamon, turmeric, black pepper. That's what's in there today. Relaxing is wondering, is Bali safe for transgender? I don't know. Generally, Bali feels very safe to me. I'm not transgender and I don't have very many uh, experiences even interacting with transgender people and knowing what would make them feel safe or or what, you know, it's, you know, like if you're not connected to a certain part of society, you're kind of oblivious to it. Like maybe there's a whole transgender community in Bali, but I'm not aware of it. Um, I hope that anybody here feels safe. There's a lot of spirituality here. The local people prioritize their spiritual practices and um, like healers from all around the world gather here. So my guess is that if you're going to travel somewhere, this is probably one of the safer places for you to travel because everybody here is all about peace and love and acceptance and like healing each other and exploring your inner world and your uh, very kind of cutting edge on personal development. So uh, you could feel safe for that reason. Maybe you wouldn't feel safe because it could be, it could feel more conservative here. Like it's a little bit more old world. It's not as, um, how would I say this? Like I used to live in Capitol Hill in Seattle, which is like gay capital of the world with drag queens, transgender rainbows on the street. You go to the grocery store and people are wearing like BDSM outfits in line to buy groceries, like anything goes in Cap Hill, Seattle. So I came from there to Bali. And so for me, it felt very like, oh my goodness, here is very conservative. Like everybody's covering up and I wasn't showing my cleavage and stuff um, when I walked down the street. And when I go on my morning walks, I will still be very modest, um, not so much for safety, but more for just comfort um, or respect. Like when I'm walking down the street, if I'm wearing a bikini, all the local people are going to stare. And I just don't really want to be stared at when I'm on my morning walk. When I'm on my morning walk, I'm more like just in my own little zone. So I'll just put on a really big t-shirt. But when I would take my morning walk in Seattle, I might have my boobs out and everyone could see, but nobody's staring because it's so normal there. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like um, 
if you come to Bali and you're used to a much more sexualized culture or you have a, an appearance that's very different, uh, your sexuality or whatever, like in that whole realm of things, if it's different than kind of what's on the streets here, I feel like you'll be safe, but you might stand out. So you might be a little uncomfortable, but I don't think you're in danger in the way that you might be in other parts of the world. But I'm also only able to speak from my own experience. And uh, I wonder, you know, there might be, there's a lot of groups. There's a lot of groups in Bali, like uh, American girls in Bali. You could have transgender people in Bali. Like if you find these people, they might have a WhatsApp group and like welcome you in and be like, yeah, we meet up at this beach every day. Like there, there could be a space for you. Yeah. And if you're transgender and you're looking for a place to belong, I think you might find something worthwhile in Seattle, Capitol Hill. Um, I hope that's helpful. Was that helpful for you? That was all I have to offer on that. Ronald, I uh, was asking if meditation is helping me generally, overall moods and feelings more in control of the calmness. Um, <clears throat> yes. So I have noticed in my meditation course, I'm in week five of a 10 week meditation course. And um, it's quite a big lifestyle shift. So I'm meditating every day. Uh, like 30 to 40 something minutes. I have uh, a lecture, like a Dharma talk. I have practice instructions. There's like a group call. Um, there's readings that I do. And so it's like a course load that I do. So even if the meditation itself each day is only like 30 or 40 minutes, which I say only, it's actually a lot of a time commitment to do that. Um, on top of that, there's also studying and like classes. So um, it's quite a lot of exposure. And I've noticed that um, I have felt a shift in myself because of this meditation. I feel, I do feel more stable. I feel a lot more embodied. Like I'm really in the sensations of my body, um, <clears throat> I'm more grounded. And my understanding of meditation has shifted too, because before I was thinking about it, like trying to have an end goal, like I'm gonna meditate to feel more calm. I'm gonna meditate to feel more in control. Like I'm meditating because I want a result. I wanna feel like a better person or a better version of myself. So yes, I am experiencing that reward. The It's having an effect on me. Um, but the cool thing that I didn't really see when I started, that I understand now, is that the meditation and any spiritual practice is an exploration of what is it's an exploration of what is and what is out there so instead of i'm meditating to be calm my mindset is sh shifting so i'm meditating to experience whatever is going on and i might feel more calm afterwards but it's not about achieving the end result of being calm it's more like exploring for like a, it's like a joy ride there's not a destination you're going on a joy ride just because you love the feeling of moving and seeing new scenery so in meditation or spiritual work the scenery is inside when you take a joy ride in your car the scenery is the landscape of the of the ocean or the beach or the city or the fields wherever you're driving through you're just going on a drive to see what's out there and maybe see something brand new. Um, and this is the energy of the explorer or the adventurer. Like 
I'm just going to travel out in the world to find out what's out there. I might like it. I might not. Doesn't matter. I'm just exploring. And with the meditation and spiritual advent- spiritual adventuring is what we're doing. We're going inwards to see what's in there. What is the internal landscape? Am I going to like it? Am I not going to like it? Is it going to be fun? Is it going to be uncomfortable? It could be different every day. But I'm doing this out of curiosity to increase my awareness of what is, what is here. And yes, I'll probably feel more calm afterwards. Um, But the main mission is purely to just expand my understanding of what, what exists. So that's what I've been experiencing in this course so far. Mustafa said, why do your eyes open like train headlights? That's called enthusiasm. (laughs) Oh, I do not speak French, Harvey. I am sorry. That's a language I have not mastered yet. Uh, Mustafa is asking, how long have you been painting watercolors? I'm not really a watercolorist. I'm an acrylic painter. I played with watercolors starting from the age of being a child, but I really don't identify with it too much. Am I broadcasting from my workshop? Am I an artist? Yes, I am an artist. Yes, I'm broadcasting from my workshop. It's so cute calling it a workshop. Normally I call it a studio. Um, This is my studio in Bali right now. um, I'm gonna see if I can show you. My computer will turn. This is my desk. This is the view out the window. Um, Palm trees and a neighborhood, kind of hard to show. If you're one of my studio members, um, you can become a studio member by clicking one of the the links in the description below. Uh, I share with my studio members more photos of uh, my little adventures outside of the studio, outside of the workshop. Someone's wanting to see my old videos again, right? I had a lot more videos. I had hundreds of videos on YouTube and they were uh, removed. My channel was shut down a year ago. So I've been slowly building my channel back up and um, I have not yet added all the old videos to it. I've made some of those available to studio members, but um, it's kind of a process for me to decide which ones to post again, if you're wondering where they are. Um, I've been in a, I've been in a bit of a, a rut trying to figure out how to rearrange my business and make my videos available for you guys in the best way possible. I get a little stuck sometimes on the admin organization side. I'm like, Hmm, what's the best way to set this up? So if anyone has any ideas, feel free to send them in, you know, um, I could just upload them again to the YouTube, but sometimes it makes more sense to me to keep some of them private and then have those available just for my paying studio members, like exclusive content. Mustafa said, should meditation be very thoughtful and purposeful or should it just be meditation? What does this depend on? Well, Do you want to define what you mean by just be meditation? Because (laughs) uh, it's like defining a word in the definition. Should meditation be this or should meditation be meditation? You got to have a different way to define it. So you're actually explaining what we're comparing here. Alex is saying, "Have have you connected with higher beings in the astral realm? You do it all the time and it's beyond enlightening. Super cool that you're connected with other beings. Um, I do not connect with other beings or I have not yet. I stay more in my body and grounded in this realm. Um, The discussion of other beings, higher beings or astral planes or any of that is fascinating, right? Depending on your life experience, it'll either be super familiar, you do it all the time, or far at the other end, you think it's hocus pocus, it doesn't even exist. And then there's 
you know, a spectrum of in the middle of that. At the moment, I have been reading and listening to podcasts by Robert Falconer, who is an internal family systems therapist who specializes in the um, spiritual side of things. So parts of our personality is what we deal with in IFS. Um, and, and Robert Faulkner deals with unattached burdens, spirit possession. Uh, what else has he got in his new book? I don't know. It's, I'm just kind of exploring it and learning about it. I have a bunch of friends who talk to spirits and have a lot of experience with this kind of stuff because I run in uh, communities of healers. And living in Bali, there are a lot of people here that are connected to other realms and have experience with other beings. Um, it's not something I personally have experience with, but I'm surrounded by it all the time. So I'm very open to talk about it. Um, bah, you astral projected as a child and did it just naturally. And I would do it in elementary school and travel into other classrooms to see what your friends were doing. Sick. That's so cool. Like, what a cool superpower. <laughs> Bali is not expensive, but all, obviously it'll be relative. You know, it could be expensive for you, but it, uh, but not for someone else. Um, in terms of the, the whole world, Southeast Asia is cheaper. A little bit more affordable for people in general here. It's cheaper for me to live in Bali than it is to live in America especially somewhere like Seattle. I can't afford to live in Seattle, but I can afford to live in Bali. <laughs> ah, I'm saying that I could live in Seattle, but like all my money would go towards rent instead of going towards fun things. So uh, you're also a healer. It's all natural. You've never been trained. Very cool. A lot of us have healing abilities that have been there naturally that haven't been officially trained and then to actually receive training in it and like learn how to harness it it's just the next powerful step i'm also learning about how um you know with with the different parts of us all of our parts have the ability to participate in our healing so we all have the ability innate ability to heal to heal ourselves we are all healers just like we are all creators, every single person who is alive has the ability to create and has the ability to heal. Mustafa wants to know, how long do you think it took for a galaxy that we have never seen or known to create itself? You know, that question is outside of my wheelhouse. <laughs> I am not an astronomer. I do not know much about the creation of galaxies. Um, very cool question, though. I think ChatGPT could help us. Let me see if I can just do that right now. ChatGPT, the world needs some help, please. Um, anybody else here use ChatGPT? I'm using it now these days instead of Google whenever I have a question. I use the paid version of ChatGPT so that it actually like searches the internet. Here we go. <laughs> Mustafa asked me, how long do you think it took for a galaxy that we have never seen or known to create itself? Well, Mustafa, I get this question all the time, actually. Uh, the formation of galaxies is a complete process that spans vast periods of time, deeply intertwined with the history of the universe itself. Oh my God. Yeah, we got a whole essay coming in here from ChatGPT. Goes all the way back to the Big Bang, era of galaxy formation, cosmic dawn, 200 million years. So, for a galaxy that we have never seen or known to create itself from initial fluctuations in the density of the universe to the formation of a stable galaxy with stars and planets, it could take anywhere from a few hundred million to a several billion years. So just like a small range of time, anywhere from a few hundred million years to several billion years, give or take a few. 
The precise timeline would depend on various factors, including the mass and the density of the galaxy, the environment in which it forms, and the rate at which it can accumulate and convert gas into stars. Duh. Does that answer your question? It's a long time, my friend. It's a long time. And we're all going to be so dead within the tiniest little blip of that amount of time. Ah. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you want to come to Bali, I've got a question here. What type of visa are you on for living? So um, because I'm traveling around more at the moment, I'm coming in and out of the country. I'm not no not knowing how long I stay in Bali um, at a time, just coming for a few months. I just get a social visa so I can stay for six months. Um, if you just show up at the airport and pay the money at the airport, they'll let you stay for 30 days. And you can extend it to 60 days, but then you need to leave. If you come and you want to live long term, longer than six months, then you can apply for what's called a KITAS. It's a special visa that lets you stay for multiple years. And in order to do that, you have to apply and you need to have reasons and employment or a sponsor or somebody that's going to like vouch for you because you're going to be contributing to the economy essentially. Hey, okay. You know what? I'm getting messages from people who are liking my new song. I just got a message. My email just popped up and was like, Hey, Hey, the song, the new song is amazing. Phenomenal. You continue to amaze and inspire me. And I just got a text message from my friend, the frizz from Los Angeles. Who's uh, one of my best friends. She's my best music production friend. And she just said, dude, your new song. I'm obsessed. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, boo. So if you're brand new here or you didn't know, you haven't heard yet, I just released a new song yesterday. Small Magic by Shaw Wild. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Music. It's on YouTube Music. I'm going to put the link to it in the chat right now. You can go check it out. There's the YouTube link. Let's listen to it on Spotify too. Shaw Wild, Small Magic on Spotify. I went around the city playing small, small magic. Said it sounds so pretty. Say it's all so tragic. I wonder if my love will ever be my own. Wandering above on my way back home. I put a link in there now to Spotify. If you want to go listen to my song and see if we can get it up over a thousand listens this first weekend. It's called Small Magic. The cover art of it is me lying naked on a beach in Australia it's at sunrise. Then I've got my painting over the top of it. Yeah. Super fun. Super fun. I'm so happy to share that song with you guys, and uh, I'm really happy that you guys are loving it. Let me show you on my iPad the cover art. Yeah. Have you been listening? Can you guys tell me in the comments if you've been listening to the song? Make my day. Tell me you've been listening to my song. This is my new song, Small Magic. Let's hear it. Thank you. 
I went around the city playing small, small magic. Said it sounds so pretty, say it's all so tragic. I wonder if my love will ever be my own. Wondering above on my way back home. There's a light inside me, I'm learning all I need. I keep running forward with a hungry heart to feed. There's a light inside me, I'm learning all I need. I keep running forward with a hungry heart to feed. I went running off, tried to run away, tried to disappear, but I missed you every day. I went running off, tried to run away, tried to rediscover if I could be okay. I went around the city playing small, small magic. Said it sounds so pretty, say it's all so tragic. I wonder if my love will ever be my own. Wandering above on my way back home. There's a light inside me, I've heard it's all I need. I keep running forward with a hungry heart to feed. There's a light inside me, I've heard it's all I need. But I miss you every day. Small, small magic, said it sounds so pretty, say it's all so tragic. I wonder if my love will ever be my own. Wondering above on my way back, around the city, playing small, small magic, said it sounds so pretty, say it's all so tragic. I wonder if my love will ever be my own. Wondering above on my way back. There's a light inside me, I've heard it's all I need. I keep running forward with a hungry heart to feed. On repeat. Because this is the theme of the weekend. Are you sick of it yet? Don't be, it's so good. <laughs> I love my own music. It's fun. It's a good theme. To love your own artwork. Okay, that was my little dance party for the day. <laughs> ah, the song is great. Nothing better than the live singing. Bravo. Thank you. You're so welcome. Super fun. I love sharing my music with you guys. And I love uh, singing along to my own music. Um, and I love dancing. I've been silly little dance parties to my own music. It's like truly a joy. So thanks for being my audience when I get to indulge in that. And I put the links in this chat. So if you want to play it again later, you'll be able to listen to it on Spotify, Apple Music, or YouTube Music. It's actually on all the different platforms. You might even be able to play it on Snapchat or Instagram or TikTok or Napster, <laughs> wherever you listen to music. Uh, where do you listen to music? You guys write in the chat for me. Where do you listen to music? Napster, right? LimeWire. Does anyone remember LimeWire? Uh, Ronald's listening to music on Spotify. I listen to music on Spotify. Do I stream daily? Um, I want to say yes. I've been aiming to stream daily. Uh, and in the middle of my day, like 11 a.m. to like 2 p.m., kind of in that window is what I've been doing lately. Um, I 
I've been aiming, honestly, I've been aiming for 11 a.m. I'm a little scared to say that out loud because then I'm like committing to it slightly. But I've been aiming to go live at 11 a.m. Bali time, doing my best to see if I can show up. Today I didn't show up at 11. I showed up at like 12.30, but I showed up. I showed up. Um, you've been mostly, JC's mostly listening to music on YouTube. Quantum Nels says YouTube premium and finally you caught me live and the new song is great. And even though you're not normally a God smack or alter bridge type of music lover, your voice is mesmerizing. Hold up. God smack or alter bridge? Do you mean alternative or... I've just never heard God smack before or Alter Bridge, and I've never heard that associated to my music. God smack? God smack. God smack music. What is that? God smack is an American rock band. Wait a second. God smack genre. I'm Googling this. I should ask ChatGPT. Why would I ask Google? You gotta explain yourself. What I'm actually saying is that that's normally what I listen to, and yet, oh, okay, I misread it. Normally, you're a God Smack or Alter Bridge type of music lover, but you're making an exception for me. That's okay, I get it. You can see how I was like, God Smack is a genre of music that I fall into. That's something I've never heard before. I typically get grouped into pop music, pop dance music, maybe indie pop or a little bit of folk singer songwriter. But these days mainly just pop dance music, electronic, electronica. I don't know what the genres are these days. Um, Alex is watching from New Hampshire. Do you guys want to share again where you, now that there's more people, we've been hanging out for like 30 minutes. Where in the world are you located? Relaxing has their own YouTube channel and you're going to send your subscribers to listen to my music. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. Send them over. They're welcome. I love people in my audience. I love my audience. Um, I'm so glad that you guys are catching alive for the first time. Um, I really, really love live streaming. Just let it be known. I love showing up and live streaming. And it has been a challenge for me to show up and live stream in the last year because I was writing a novel. And I poured so much energy into writing. There just was not very much energy left for me to come and live stream and perform and share and talk. And like all this energy that I'm giving to you right now was being directed into a writing project. And my writing project was very linked to my own personal healing. So I was not only was I busy with the writing itself, I was also doing a lot of digging deep into my feelings to pull out the stories that I was writing. And so day after day, I was like crying and feeling and going deep inside. And I'm like, I don't wanna go on camera right now. I'm too vulnerable. So I, I really didn't do as much live streaming in the last year because of that. Um, or because I was traveling and the internet was not possible to work with at all. Um, or I was, you know, staying in other people's houses and I just didn't really feel safe to show up and, and connect in this way because I was just like in someone's living room or something. Uh, and so this is the beauty of this little chapter of life right now is that I have this little studio space where I do feel very safe to show up and share with you guys. And um, it feels really, really wonderful to have just enough stability and just enough space that I can come and I can show up. So it feels really good to be here and I, I really appreciate you guys being so encouraging and asking me questions and um, sharing about yourselves too. <laughs> 
Quantum's trying to get me to sing some Evanescence. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you. Ronald's astounded. Can't believe that you haven't listened to Godsmack. Well, I, can, I can't. I can My phone just kicked me out of Spotify. I could try listening to Godsmack on my iPad. But if I do that, I'm going to have to go silent for just a second because otherwise I'll get in trouble for copyright. So let's just see on my iPad here. Godsmack. What a name. Is it Godsmack or God's Godsmack? Which is it? Okay, I'm going to mute my microphone for one moment while I just discover Godsmack. I'm trying to be a new fan, but I think it's too demanding on the internet here to try and play a song at the same time. So I'm going to have to listen to that after uh, this live stream. I'll get back to you. I'll report back on my feelings on God's back. Uh, <clears throat> relaxing said, I'm just scrolling and I found your live stream. What a coincidence. You just found me. Who else just found me? Who's Who's first time is who who in this chat is experiencing me in a live stream for the first time? Say I'm new here in the comments. Ronald, I missed you too. Trust me. I did. Alex said, relaxing. I think you're talking to each other. Me too. I just happened to see she was live and was like, I'm gonna check her out. And I'm extremely happy I did. Thank you. Uh, quantum that I would say that you are a modern day Alanis Morissette in the way that you express your talent, but unlike her, you bring out more of a Sarah McLaughlin type of wholesomeness minus Alanis's anger. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like I'm on a singing show and I'm getting critiqued by the uh, judges in a good way. Um, I feel like I hear those names often, actually. It's pretty good. You've been godsmacked. Uh, I was just trying to remember some lyrics that I wrote a long time ago to see if they had something like godsmacked in them. But no. Hi, la la. I love the look at no watch. So good. Don't understand that comment. <laughs> uh, Mod, good? Maj? How do you say your name? You're in Egypt? Alex is a new subscriber, but first time catching a live. Maj is single. Congratulations on your freedom. Um, Jacques is a newbie. What do I think about metal music? What do I think about metal music? Well, um, I grew up with a brother who loved metal music and blasted it and played it through the wall of our bedrooms. And I would bang on the wall and just be like, shut up. I like gentle music like John Mayer and I thought it was nothing but noise and anger and I thought it was stupid um, and overwhelming and grating on my ears that's how I felt my entire upbringing growing up next to metal music and then when I was 26 or 27 I had a, a boyfriend 
who understood the beauty of metal music. And he sat me down, we dimmed the lights, we turned up the speakers, and we did a little exploration of high quality metal music as he took me on a tour of it and um, helped me appreciate it. So now I have a very deep appreciation of metal music. I don't listen to it, but I appreciate it. And I understand what it's all about. And the skill in it, the really powerful emotions being expressed there. And um, just like... I come from a big background of guitar players, like being surrounded by a lot of male guitar players who love metal music. And so understanding the skill that comes in a lot of those metal guitar players and like the shredding that happens. Um, and then being a singer and having huge respect for the people who actually know how to scream in a safe way and in a way that is like beautiful to sing and then transition into screaming and like just so much vocal control. It's insane. Um, and the ability to express and unleash those emotions, which I have not actually had a lot of experience unleashing those emotions myself. I tend in my music, I tend to lean more towards, um, a sense of wonder, exploring emotions of love, exploring sensitivity, vulnerability, fear, sadness, grief, melancholy. I go a little bit more in that direction. Um, nostalgia, um, and also like, mm, I really like the bouncy emotions, like cheerfulness, playfulness, silliness. A lot of my older songs too have a lot of mischief, like a lot of, uh, I like to play with like little characters who have a little bit of mischievous personality. Like, I like that. That's where I'm expressing. And when I have uh, made songs that are a little bit darker, I've explored more into like, um, I, I like to think about my dark side as a little bit more like deep, dark, and sparkly, which is a lyric I use in my song Cruella, where I play a little bit more with like evil and witches and magic and... Um, and I have not attempted to go into the realm of really unleashing anger or angst or like argh, monster feelings. I don't, I don't know how much I've got in there to get out. Uh, typically when I have those feelings come up, I get more physical. Like I, I've screamed and punched pillows or I threw my yoga mat a few months ago because of anger, but I haven't typically gone for a lot of like screaming or vocalizing or like wanting this intense sound. Um, that said, mm, I have to edit what I'm saying. I think my intense energy like that feels more cathartic to listen to bass music. Um, do you know whipped cream? Like a lot of EDM bass music can help unleash this like angry feeling too. Or this very primal monster feeling. So I just tip more towards the EDM rather than towards metal. But they, I think, can still be dealing with the same kind of like intensity in the darkness. So like whipped cream, for some reason, when I listen to her music, I haven't listened to it in a long time, but I have a few memories of driving on the freeway and blasting her nasty music because I was so angry and nothing made me feel better than just her like, <laughs> um, I will say in the world of metal, I'm not sure how metal it is. It might be a little bit more soft core metal, but like, is that a thing? Soft core metal? I don't know. Soft metal. The band, nothing more. Uh, they have a song called War or Go to War. I saw Nothing More live. I went to a Papa Roach concert with my brother a few years ago, and I saw Nothing More. And that really opened up my mind to th th another genre, 
that was like, wow, this is actually really cool. So I listened to that go to war song a lot when I was feeling really angry too. But a lot of these angry feelings, I only really get them when I'm in America, when I'm in Seattle. <laughs> Uh, I've noticed that when I'm traveling, different countries really pull out different attraction to different types of music. So I listen to a lot of world music, uh, music from the Middle East, music from Africa, um, <clears throat> Mongolian music, like music that's more like tribal. That gets my ears perked up when I'm in travel mode. Uh, just being out here in the world. Uh, when I'm in America, I tend to gravitate more towards listening to the American music. It's just kind of what's playing around me, you know? But yeah, metal. I grew up with a metal, a boy, a metal boy band grow, grew up with me in my house. So my brother had a band. They played metal. It was everywhere. And I was a singer songwriter, EDM, like plur, peace and love kind of girl wearing white crochet while the boys ran around in black screaming. That was my childhood. <laughs> That's my answer to how I feel about metal music. Was that interesting for anybody? Did I say anything that was enlightening? Please do tell. Uh, Jacques said, you're a newbie to the live. Welcome. But you always watch my YouTube videos. You really like my paintings. Thank you. Oh, my God. Okay, Quantum is going on with the name dropping here. You like Ultra Bridge. It's basically Creed without Scott. And instead, the singer is Miles Kennedy, who has an amazing voice, and you would absolutely appreciate his talent. I'm teasing you now. Um, Alex said, you're very expressive in a playful, comical way, and your energy is extremely calming and joyful. Thank you for that feedback. I love hearing how it's coming across and knowing how I'm impacting you guys. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> oh, but Scott is back with Creed, and they are touring, and I'll actually see them in September in Tampa. Quantum, you're making me smile with all of your musical um, references. You clearly care a lot about music. Do I know Texas Shuffle? Is that a band? Alex says, your laughter is amazing. It's so good and refreshing. Thank you. You're welcome. Mustafa wants to know the best movie I've watched, like ever, like in it. In all of my years of my life, what's the best movie I've ever watched? How does one even begin to answer that question? I've always really liked When Harry Met Sally, I have to say. That's the first movie that always comes to my mind. It's a really good one. I could watch it a lot. Also... Really like um, the remakes that Disney's doing these days. Not all of them, but I think it's really fun having grown up watching Disney movies and now getting to see them like live action. Not saying they're the best movies, but it's just a fun experience. I really look forward to it. It's like reading a book. I really want to see the movie afterwards. I really look forward to seeing these new things. Avatar, really like that movie. I really hate war. That's lame. <laughs> but before they go to war, when they're just dr playing in the magical jungle, love that. Also, um, I would say the same thing about Harry Potter. Before it gets all dramatic. Just when you get to like go around Hogwarts and see the world come to life and magic. This is my opinion on movies. Honestly, they're all great for the first 30 minutes and then they become shit and I'm bored and I want to stop. I love the first 30 minutes when you get introduced to the world and they're taking you around and they're like, look at this magical universe. And I'm like, yes, I love this. And then suddenly it becomes drama and I just don't have the patience for it generally. And I feel like I'm looking at my watch through it. I'm in the movie theater 
most of the time I'm in the movie theater looking at my watch. I don't wear a watch, but I'm, my metaphorical watch is like, when is this movie going to end? It should have ended 30 minutes ago. They drag them out. Does anyone else feel like movies take way too long these days? Like they should be an hour, an hour and a half. These two hour, two and a half, three hour movies are too long for me. I think I might like it if it was three hours of just exploring Hogwarts without the drama. Like I love being immersed in a different world, but I don't really like being immersed in other people's problems. Sometimes movies do a really good job, like a book of actually like helping you heal because you're experiencing narrative and going through a narrative of someone else's life can help you heal your own life. Like that's the beauty of storytelling for human beings is that we actually learn and heal through hearing each other's stories. But a lot of these movies are not hitting that. I'm not coming home being like, wow, that moved me and helped me heal and evolve. A lot of the time I'm just watching action and drama and I'm like, this is not helping me. Can we just go back to the beginning when I got to see the magical world that this is taking place in? And can we just do that? Really? You know what I love? I love planet earth. There's no drama in planet earth. It's just, you know, that's metal. You know that planet earth metal. <laughs> it's brutal. Like, but it's real and it's beautiful and it's not dramatic. Like watching a, a lion kill an antelope isn't dramatic. It's brutal, but it's not dramatic. They just do the thing. They just do it. And it's not malicious. Um, and it's not like psychotic. It's just simple death. And it's fascinating. I love watching Planet Earth. It's relaxing and it's real and it's um, mind blowing that the photographers went out there and captured those moments. And it's mind blowing that those moments exist. And I love that I belong to that world, that it's getting to see the magic, the wonder of the world that we actually live in. It's so cool. So I would rather watch documentaries that are just watching flamingos walk through swamps for an hour than watch most movies that get released. Um, those are my opinions on movies. <clears throat> Quantum. <gasps> Ah, nothing more. Just toured with Papa Roach again. And I saw them about six months ago and it was a great show. And Papa Roach brings the veracity. Hoorah, ro, ro, huh? Ro, hoorah, hoorah, veracity, roar, ro, 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 ro. I don't know what that means. Have I just seen the Disturbs version of The Sound of Silence? Yes, I have. That's probably the song that helped me appreciate metal when my boyfriend turned the lights down. He's like, I'm going to play you something that's absolutely stunning. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. In the sound of silence. Have I seen Interstellar? Yes, I do. I have seen Interstellar. That's a movie that definitely helps with narrative healing. And I could, I cry a lot when I see that movie. I saw that movie on the airplane to Bali a couple months ago, a month ago. And can I also, has anyone noticed that airplanes have turned into movie theaters? And not any movie theater, like quite an obnoxious movie theater, given that there's a screen on the back of every single seat. And if you're traveling across the planet, I was on a 17 hour flight from Seattle to Singapore, 17 hours in one flight. And there were one, two, three, four, five, six. There were 11 seats, rows, 11 seats going across. And that meant that when I got up to go to the bathroom, I would turn around and there were hundreds of screens glowing in my face. And I was like, this doesn't really seem fair. Every single, okay, it's fair in that like majority rules. If everybody here wants to be watching movies and I'm the only person that doesn't want to watch a movie, I lose because I'm in the minority. But for my little minority person, I would rather that we were all reading books. I wish the airplane was quiet and dark and everyone was just reading books or sleeping. Or if there's a movie playing, there's one movie playing up there. But it is so overwhelming when you're just like, oh my God, there are screens everywhere. And I'm seeing violence and I'm seeing like 
all these different stories and movies that I never want to see again. I have to like see it on the airplane because the person next to me is watching it. And I'm like trying not to see someone's head blown off. It's a lot. I'm not a fan. And so, yeah, Interstellar was playing on the person's screen next to me on the flight to Bali. So I couldn't pull my eyes away from it because it's such an incredible movie because Matthew McConaughey just has to be amazing at gripping you with his face even when you can't, like, uh, you're reading subtitles. He's just so expressive and emotive. It's incredible. And that's an amazing movie. But the whole time I'm, like, crying because I'm like, he's going to miss his entire daughter's life. I can't handle this emotionally. I just wanted to fly to Bali. I was, I was on the airplane to Bali trying to do my meditation and trying to read, and I was taking, what I was watching, I was watching courses about um, music production and vocal uh, training. So I was trying to just be in my little zone of like meditation and improving my skills, but the person next to me just had to watch Interstellar, and so then I was exposed to like the sadness of Matthew McConaughey's a fictional daughter missing out on sharing life with her father. And then crying. So I spent so much of that flight crying. Just, oh, I didn't ask for that. If we're going to have so many screens on the plane, can we please have like the screens that go black from the side so you can't just like have to see them all? I don't want to see what the neighbor next to me chose. I just don't like that. I think it's a serious down quality of air travel. <sighs> Okay. I'm enjoying my ranting today. I hope that it's bringing you joy. Alex says, have you ever heard of the Indian pop rapper Shuba or the up and coming singer Alana Jeffries? You're good friends with both of them. No, I have not heard of either of them, but thank you for introducing me to someone new. What kind of uh, music does Alana Jeffries sing? Alex liked that I looked at my watch with no watch. Yeah, it's a metaphorical watch. I don't have a watch. Hey, Mark. Thank you for welcoming everybody. I love this. It is very important to me that you guys are kind to each other and welcome each other. So if you are brand new here, identify yourself and say, I'm new here. And then if you have been around for a while, welcome the new people, just like Mark. He said, welcome to Shaw Wild live stream, new people. That's what I want to see. I want to see you guys welcoming each other. Enjoy her art and music. She is amazing and fantastic. Thank you, Mark. Mark's one of my big fans and followers. Mark likes to play my music on the piano. Anybody else who plays my songs, please let me know. I would love to know that my music is getting played. That counts if you play it on speakers or if you play it on instruments or if you love to sing along to it. Just let me know. Makes me happy. Um, Alex says, yes, you've noticed the con conversion of airplanes turning into movie theaters. Oh my God. I don't think it matters too much when I'm flying from Seattle to Denver. You know, three hours, two, three hours in the air. That's fine. But the 20 hours or 17 hours that I spent flying from America to Asia, 20 hours in a movie theater. I'm exaggerating now. You see that big fish? I was on the airplane for 16 hours and 50 minutes. I think. But suddenly it was 17 hours and then suddenly it was 20 hours. I spent 25 hours on an airplane to go to Singapore and it turned into a movie theater. <laughs> the truth is that it was in the 16 to 17 hour interval. I was on the plane at least 16 hours, not more than 17, but that's a long time to spend in a movie theater. <clears throat> Quantum says, it's so hard to produce new movies that deliver something new, but I think new stuff like the show Black Mirror is wildly cool. Black Mirror will fuck you up for life. That needs a rating of its own. That's like triple R. Will fuck you up. Ruin your mind permanently. Uh, 
The screens need horse blinders, exactly. Or they need that like special screen that you can't view from the side. Like when you go to the side, it turns black. You know what I'm talking about? They have those like so that the person next to you can't read your confidential business work. Is there surfing in Bali? Yes, there is. Um, Bali has a little peninsula at the bottom and the best surfing happens down here. Actually, it's where I am located at the moment. It's in Uluwatu. It's the bottom region of uh, Bali. Uh, the other parts of Bali are better for diving. There's also surfing up near the airport. So like beginners can learn to surf more up by the airport. And then that's like Changu, Kuta, Seminyak. And then down here in Uluwatu are bigger waves. Anybody in the audience surf? <clears throat> Alex said, two new people and Alana is a pop with an acoustic guitar. She's very similar singer to you. Okay, let me look. Alana Jefferies. How cute. She's cutie poo. All right, I'll listen to her music later. Um... Shuba is an indie pop and also rapper. She is like the female version of Eminem. The female version of Eminem. That is a big old claim right there. I hope so. She can deliver on that. Check that out. Badass. All right. Uh, Ronald said that you've played and put my new song in your playlist. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, this is a very, very fun conversation, you guys. It's very difficult for me to stop it because I like talking to you guys so much. Um, we've explored many topics and we've had a lot of laughter and you've heard my opinions now on many things. And we had a dance party to my new song. Are there any final comments or final questions? Write them now. How many countries have I traveled to? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. At least fifteen, sixteen. Something like that. <clears throat> you tried body surfing on the north end of Oahu in Hawaii, in which seems to be 20 foot waves and was literally one of the most violent things I've ever been through. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right, you have to go. Bye bye. See you on the next live stream. Yeah, good night, you guys. You're all around the world. Some of you I know are in my time zone, so it's enjoy the rest of your day. Um, some of you are in the middle of the night. I hope that you get to go to sleep eventually. Uh, and those of you that are just about to go to bed or you're winding down for the day, I hope that this live stream brought you some joy and a smile and that you're going to have peaceful dreams and deep slumber. Um, <clears throat> in the description of this video, there are links where you can come and listen to my music. You can check out my blog. You can become a studio member. Um, what else? I'll be here again. I'm gonna aim again for around 11 to noonish tomorrow, my time in Bali. And I'll see who else wants to show up and hang out with me. <sighs> Final question. Any country you wish you have visited? 
Absolutely. I would very, very much like to see Vietnam. There are these giant caves. You know what I'm talking about? Biggest cave in the world, I think, is in Vietnam. And you can camp at the bottom of it, and you're just this tiny little dot with this giant cave over your head. I think that would be incredible. There are other places I'd like to go, but I'll just choose one for today. The giant caves in Vietnam, please. Besides Asia? How come besides Asia? Asia is the place to be. <laughs> I love being in Asia. Um, there's so many places in Asia that are just waiting to be discovered by me. <laughs> uh I, I'm not going to go to the, Brazil. I would like to go to Brazil because Brazil is um, the next spiritual headquarters of the world, according to Robert Falkner. He said that in the coming years, Brazil will be for us what India and Tibet have been. So it's like such a strong epicenter of spiritual development like massive spiritual evolution, knowledge, wisdom, experience coming from uh, India and Tibet. That's a huge gift that those countries have given to humanity is this depth of human spirituality. Um, and that is also coming out of Brazil. So I've just been recently learning about this and it has my curiosity peaked about Brazil. Alex says, there's nothing better than body surfing and getting thrashed by the wave. Nothing better than being thrashed by the wave, brah. It's amazing. You miss it. It's going on 2 a.m. and I wish you nothing but sweet dreams. Is there a way you can contact me personally? Um, if you want to be able to engage with me more, become one of my studio members. I, uh, You're a photographer of the paranormal and the UFOs. Alex, you are out there interdimensional beings and what you've captured would blow your mind. Amazing. Um, if you're wanting to contact me personally to be able to share things like photographs, then become one of my studio members and you'll be able to send me messages. Um, Mark, I was in Bali seeing a friend who was a DJ. Awesome. Very cool. Lots of DJs in Bali because there's lots of sunset dance parties on the cliffs and the beaches. All right, I'm going to go. Um, my stomach is hungry, so it's time to eat some, some food. Um, hanging out with you guys on the live was really fun. I'm very curious to know uh, what's connecting with you the most, what topics you really enjoy hearing me talk about, and feel free to ask any more questions or um, answer any questions that I've asked you. You can always answer those in the comments. Even in the replay, there'll be a comments section you can reply and engage with. Chris is sending in all the questions. So, this is the super last question. What's your all-time favorite food? That is another, that's not a, that's not an easy question. That's like asking me my favorite movie. We're going to be here for another 20 minutes. I'll talk about my favorite food in a different live stream. Because <sighs> I like food. You have thousands and thousands of captures and it's amazing. And you're blacklisted on YouTube. That's a fun thing to say on your resume. I too was actually kicked off of YouTube. It happens to the best of us. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to go now. You're all delightful. I'll see you later. Tomorrow around 11 a.m. if I'm able to stick to it. See ya.